Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Braypath. And in episode 235, I want to talk about the key gauges that should be on your business continuity program dashboard. What we're looking at here, what I'm talking about here, are the metrics that are really necessary to understand the health of your business continuity program. And if you have a business continuity tool like Fusion Risk Management or Risk Connect uh, or Resiliency One or one of the other uh, solid tools on the market, um, this kind of dashboarding is something that you can easily build based upon the data that's in your system. And in a lot of cases, these gauges come right out of the box. But what I'm going to do is walk through some of the key gauges that we build into these dashboards as an example of how you can measure the effectiveness of your program. And here we're going to talk more about, we're going to talk initially more about operational metrics. At the end, I'm going to talk a little more about strategic metrics that you want to focus on. So first of all, there's a, a couple just really key metrics you want to have out of the gate. The first one is how many business continuity plans are in the organization? So in the example I'm looking at here, there are 79 business continuity plans that I'm looking at. And then we want to see graphically, if we can, the plans by status. So whatever the workflow is that you're following, you know, a funnel towards approval, what does that look like? And can you show that? So we think about this as um, basically no progress to the plan update is scheduled or assigned to it's in progress to its pending approval by you know, whatever approver there is, and then approved. Sometimes there's a quality review or a validation as a part of that. But you can almost represent this as a funnel going from that wide uh, spot where all plans are at play, nothing has started yet, it's a new year, new life cycle, all the way down to what's been approved. And show that breakdown to show where things are at. And then you can do the same with your business impact analysis. The way we think about BIAs is that the process data is connected to plans. But so in this case, 79 business continuity plans, 232 BIAs that are a part of those plans. And then you have the same kind of reporting on the funnel where things are at. You can also highlight, depending upon how you manage your life cycle, for uh, plans or BIAs that are late. So ones that are not yet approved by whatever timeline that you've established. If you're an organization like one that some that we've worked with in the past, where you're moving through specific waves of updates, then they have a due date. Uh, and you can measure against that due date and report those late plans as well. I then like to have really clear metrics on just the number or percentage of approved plans and approved BIAs just to make that uh, kind of funnel workflow diagram clearer. You can almost do this as like a, a speedometer dashboard where you're going from red to yellow to green, and that shows the progress of those um, plan approvals and BIA approvals to date. The next one is your exercise metrics. And there's a couple key exercise metrics that come to mind. In most of our clients that we work with, we require, they require an annual tabletop exercise for each business continuity plan which means I should be able to see if there are 79 BC plans, I should see 79 plans exercised at the end of the life cycle. So you can report in the same way that progress towards completing the exercise. Um, and then we usually wanna see the tracking of open action items from those exercises. How many are still to be remediated? Uh, how many are open? How many are closed uh, based upon the most recent exercise cycle? Um, and again, you can also show uh, where they're late and um, show, you know, here are the ones here. There are five action items that are beyond their due date. And you can get more granular with that if you want and break that into uh, what it looks like uh, by area or team member or whatever the right metric is for your program. I then like to show and break down some just basic organizational metrics. And I don't like to get too complicated with this because if you have a tool, you can drill down to this and you can get more specific. But I do like to show BIAs by recovery time objective across the organization to give some sense about how many critical functions that there are. Um, in this particular uh, breakdown that I'm looking at here as an example, we have BIAs that go from immediate to, uh, in terms of recovery time, so processes that go from immediate recovery. Uh, so think about things like a global security operations center to four hours 
24 hours, 70, 48 hours, 72 hours, one week, one month. That's how this organization has broken things down. And so we have a pie chart, uh, really a donut chart, that shows that breakdown on BIAs. One other thing that we do uh, for this particular client, because what's really important to them are their customer-facing processes, we have another view of this that takes out the kind of core operational process, maybe that's not the right term, the core support processes, and it only shows customer-facing processes and the things that those processes are dependent upon, so the things that have to be in place for them to work. And then they get a different view that's a little more customer-centric, um, and they acknowledge that this takes out of that view things like physical security and information security and others that are still critical, but they're not necessarily uh, customer facing. Um, so it gives them a perspective of these are the ones I need to really worry about from a customer standpoint. These other things are kind of base support functions for the organization. And that resonates well with their operational teams that are there to support customers. And then lastly, we usually do some breakdown of just business continuity plans by department or division, however your company thinks of it. But we provide metrics really at the executive level that break down um, by you know, what the CEO's direct reports look like so that we can see that organizational review. The same for BIAs. And then, of course, we can drill into the organization to show more detail. So these are a good set of gauges to have on your operational business continuity dashboard. And of course, if you're also um, working with ITDR, then you can start to line up critical applications. You can um, show other data from your business impact analysis, critical real estate sites or corporate facilities, critical third-party vendors, uh, critical applications and underlying infrastructure. But it just depends on what's in your program uh, and what you're able to show and report on. And then lastly, I want to talk for a moment just about strategic metrics that you want to show. We are big fans of doing some type of annual or perhaps every other year maturity review that results in some type of a strategic metric. We've always approached this by looking at it um, using the ISO 22301 maturity model, but you could just as easily use um, you know, NIST CSF on focus on the availability and recovery domains. You could look at high trust and focus again on the availability and recovery areas. It really depends on what resonates with your organization. But the thing we like about a strategic metric, a strategic maturity metric, is it gives you a view of the maturity of your program and not necessarily just the operational components. I know a number of business continuity kind of programs that would totally ace this operational metric view, but their program's not very good because they miss all of the standard elements that are in, say, ISO 22301 in terms of controls. They don't have governance, policy, management, alignment with ITDR and others, but man, they can knock out their BC plans and BIS. So we like to have both showing that operational breakdown and the strategic maturity and growth of maturity over time within their program. So these are our most important gauges on your business continuity dashboard. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.